So the number 12 hook, 7957B, this locked the thread on my finger. So when I put, apply the thread through the hook, you don't have to stop and cut it off. Just keep going. These wings are goose wings. I've cut and glued together and I prepare them such as this. I, they're glued together, paired up. Now, what color thread are you using there, Bing? I'm using a black thread because the green drake fly is what I'm tying, and it is the Ephemerally Grandis, which has a black head on it. Now, you bring the thread up, loop it loosely, and pull straight up. Now, what's your reason for doing that? Well, if you, if you uh, do not... If you start your thread, you get uh -huh. this, and this is why most Crooked people wings. have trouble. Crooked wings. Get your, uh, hold it close to the hook and loop it loosely and pull straight up. Now, this sets back about a third from the front of the hook, and that makes a balanced, much better balanced fly. And if it don't go back, get your wings rolled back too far. Just keep rolling your... There, that's about right. Now use a plastic cement... A plastic cement. Two-thirds plastic cement and one-third head cement. This makes the wings more firm and, and, and it's tougher and they stay together better. See the... And you can kind of work them around, get the coating on them. I usually make this green drake wing a little oversized because the silhouette, uh, I think it works a lot like a magnum goose decoys. You know, you just wrap the rest of the thread. shank, huh? I wrap the rest of the hook, yes, with thread. I think all, all flies that are tied, to, the thread should be fully covered with thread. Now how do you go about making those wings like you had there? Those wings are, are put together uh, you take and pair off your yeah, yeah here's here's a duck some duck wings. You pair them off and you coat them with this plastic cement and head cement, two thirds plastic cement, one third head cement. You coat each of the wings, the pairs of wings. When they're dry, which dries almost immediately, then you cut the th cut the the wing the 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 let's see, um, quill off of one one feather and glue it. You can see the the glue Good situation together. there. Now I will show you show you how. It's done later on. You cut these off, all the way off, and if this is the way you make the wings. If you want a small, if you're going to tie about a 14 wing, you cut like that. And then you take these wings off. See they're paired? Paired. Paired up. You, these are goose wings. These are duck wings. That's the procedure I use for that. Now, I use this monolon again. Tie this monolon on tight, so tight enough so it won't slip out. And you stick it into this automatic reel contraption here I got. Now here is three peacock curl. You can use two or three. This is the egg sac on the green drake, the female green drake. I have found that it it uh, works about two to one better than a than the male, which doesn't have an egg sac naturally. One broke. One of our, our my feathers broke. So we don't get too carried away with that. We I said we can use two or three. So, so you just carry on, and the other one was just more or less a, a um, backup. So I, I didn't, we don't stop 
on. We just build this. Now the egg sac is right there where I'm tying. See, I'm trying to build that peacock hurl up to a point where it's large enough for an egg sac. And how far do you usually go up the line with that? Just uh, <laughs> that's something you, if you watch that, you you uh, pay attention to the green drakes. There's no set amount of of uh, inches, so to speak, or millimeters. You there's three different species of the green drake. There's the Ephemerilla grandis, Ingrins, and Dotsai, and they're all three uh, different sizes. There's about a millimeter uh, difference in size. So you would, uh, uh, I usually tie, try to tie the grandis, which will take care of any of the other three. Now here is a piece of number size A yellow thread which makes the yellow ribbing. You can use a gold rib on these but I uh, find out that the yellow rib uh, has been working about as good as the as good as the gold and possibly might a little bit better but it you have no problems of breakage. I tie this up on this with my clip to hold my ribbing material. This automatic reel holds the tension of the of the tail out of the tail so I can make the extended body. This is a surgical forcep that holds my monologue. Okay, now we'll go to the building up the body of a the body of a green drake. The the fly is quite plump and we build up with this Arctic foam, I mean <laughs> artist foam to point like that. We just build this and it also it lightens the fly, it builds it up and uh, it cuts down about a third of the weight of the fly <coughs> where we build up with floss. And uh, so that's the reason I use this artist foam. And uh, here and you is, just wrap that up to the wing. Uh, you got this going? Okay, now that we use the, the green drake, the, the peacock olive floss, which is a four strand floss, and uh, it uh, one underneath the beam and the next one under the hook. And we start back out of the beam here, out extent to the tail, out to the egg sac. Now you need to keep that kind of flat in order to work that That's right. Smooth. Mm -hmm. You keep that flat and you twist this. Get this twist out of it. And that's what keeps the... It's got to be fairly tight for reasons that, that the fly will be a lot more durable when this is, when this is properly put on there, snug enough and tight enough to hold You go in front of the wing. Right? Yeah, one time in front of the wing, and then I tie it off in front of the wing. At least two turns, and before you cut the floss off, and then I put it a couple other turns. Now we take the clip off, and we make the ribbing. This is at size A yellow ribbon bring it to the front now we spread these out here and get the the length of the, the of the tails is about at least two thirds the length of the body of the fly. Some flies it's a full full length. The green drake is about two thirds two thirds of the length of the of the fly when you cut the this off. So you can get about there, and I put these. Okay. 
These hack there's a hackle of one's blue and one's yellow. I dyed those out of the same these hackle were, were dyed out of the same string. They're strung. These are saddle hackle. Strung out of the same same bird. Or birds, I should say. And uh, Now, you strip this hackle back about a oh, three eighths or three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch. Take the shiny side forward. Start your hackle on like that and have it not straight up and down, vertical to the to the horizontal of the fly. And tie this on and you start your hackle and fan it out. Now if you wrap that the wrong way, it'd just it'd lay flat or... Cover. Yeah, well we have to right, right, you have to turn to the right because when we tie the thread on it, it, it turns it to the right and it tightens it. If we wrapped it on the, wrapped it on the uh, counterclockwise, it would back it off. Trim this off here and trim it off there. Get that head clear of any hackle. Now, if you as you're wrapping this hackle on, you keep that in in front of the hackle. It'll bend the hackle back toward the back and it'll keep it out of the eye of the hook. There's one hackle right there that's giving me a problem there. So you're just like building I, up the head? Just building up the head because the head does have to have some build up there. Pretty, uh, the heads are protrude out, especially on the and nails. And that knot there, you're tying it. This is the whip finish. And you, like that, make a turn, put it underneath the hook. And watch this thread here. As you're turning it, it goes over the top of this one and underneath there. This one goes over the top of this this one, and it. Underneath. Uh huh. Now you do that instead of using cements. Yeah, it are ha half hitches. This is another way to do that. Half that. This is a faster way if you when you get. On doing it this other way, it it'll that's a faster way. Now you take out, turn the fly upside down, and cut straight across. Lay it lay in your scissors on the top of the hook like that, and then go right down to as close to the body as you can right here, not too wide of a spot. Just right in the middle. Right in the middle. To expose more of the body of the fly. And then I usually take a little off of the sides. Sometimes it looks, it appears to, it sort of balances the fly. And this is the way the fly rides on the water. And it'll light that way every time. It'll light just like that. That's what you call a balance fly. This is a little, maybe sticking out a little ways. I very seldom trim them on top, but I do trim every fly I fish with, so they'll ride with the wings in an upright position. That's the green drag, the bottom view, top view, side view.